Hi there! I hope you are all doing fine out there. The summer is on its way, it's hot, and the nature is flourishing, dark days are over, people are happy and opening up. And so do our licks for today. And opening up is a good thing, as Frank Zappa used to say, the mind is like a parachute, it only works when it's open. Anyways, it's all about wide interval arpeggios this time and wide intervals it will be. Because wide intervals can create such a beautiful, open and emotive sound when you apply it, for instance, to arpeggios. But you can use it in scales or licks too. Now, in this video, we are going to look mostly at arpeggios using wider intervals to touch your listener's soul. If you don't have an audience, well, your dear grandmother or your little cousin will be touched equally intense by the licks you are about to learn. Now, as you may or may not know, the distances between the notes are called intervals. And every interval has its own name and distance, and you can see that in this graphic. Now, you see the narrower intervals up to the fourth, like the second, the third, and the fourth itself. And starting from the fifth up to the octave, we'll see the wide or large intervals, like the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the octave. Also, intervals wider than the octave, like the ninth, for instance, are obviously wide intervals. So it will be the intervals uh, up from the fifth that we are going to use to create some melodic, interesting and sophisticated wide interval arpeggio ideas. Now with this in mind, let's look at the arpeggios in common. Now arpeggios are chords that are played note by note. And chords are built from stacking third intervals. Now the E minor 7 chord, for instance, is built from the root E, a minor third G, a fifth B and a minor 7 D. And the distance between those notes are all third intervals, major or minor. If you want to know more about chord theory, please watch my videos about that subject. Now, arpeggios are most of the time played in third intervals up and down, like for instance, this E minor 7 arpeggio. And this is just fine and gives you great results. But there's another way that might provide you with more daring techniques that result in a more modern and emotive sound by using wider intervals. And this we accomplish by skipping and rearranging the notes of an arpeggio instead of playing uh, the traditional third stacking method. Now we do this by looking at a couple of important approaches and examples. First things first, let's talk about the weather. Nah, just kidding. Let's start right away with the first example. Now the first wide interval arpeggio we are going to explore is the major 6-9 arpeggio. Now this arpeggio consists of the major triad, the root C, the major 3rd E, and the perfect 5th G, extended with the 9th D and the major 13th A. The 11th is omitted because it's an avoid note in the major key. Now, a traditional pattern would be built from uh, thirds where possible, like this. Now we're going to skip some notes while uh, still leaving most of the essential notes intact. Starting by stacking two fifths, we now have a root C, a fifth G, a ninth D, a third E, a 6th A, and again a 3rd E. Now you could use economy picking for a smooth result. All downstrokes for the 6th string to the 1st string, and all upstrokes on the way back from the 1st string to the 6th string. Also make uh, a minor version, the minor 6-9 arpeggio. Uh, the notes in this arpeggio in order of appearance are a root C, then a 5th E, then the 9th D, then the minor 3rd E flat, and then the minor 6th A flat, and the minor 3rd E flat. Now in this way we could walk uh, through the modes by uh, starting each time on the next note of the major scale and each time creating a new mode. 
Now, if we do so, we get a Dorian D minor 6 9 on the second degree. The Phrygian E minor flat 6 flat 9 on the third degree. The Lydian F6 9 on the fourth degree. Mixolydian G6 9 on the fifth degree. An Aeolian A minor 9 flat 13 on the sixth degree. And a Locrian B flat 6 flat 9 on the seventh degree. Now, this is a good way to study these arpeggios and learn the notes on the neck of the guitar. All these arpeggios in a row sound like this. Now the next lick has a fourth as widest interval, so it's not really a wide interval lick. Still, it sounds very open and melodic. Uh, the lick is based on a minor pentatonic scale with uh, wide stretches and skipping notes. Now, the E minor pentatonic scale is for everyone a piece of cake, I assume. Uh, but it can also be played like this, where we use very wide stretches. Now, if we skip the middle note on strings 6, 4, and 2, we'll get a very open sounding uh, scale fragment slash arpeggio that has a modern touch to it. And you can also notice that the fingering on the guitar is symmetrical and therefore very comfortable and easy to learn. Now, we play the root E, the fourth A, the fifth B, the minor 7 D, the minor third G, the fourth A, the fifth B, and the root E. And this results in a minor 11 arpeggio. It can be played over an E minor, a G major and C major chord and each time creating a different sound. The whole arpeggio can also be transposed to a semitone lower than the root of the major chord that you are playing over to create a Lydian effect. By the way, a Lydian scale is a major scale with an augmented fourth degree, the A sharp in this case. It's one of the brightest modes of the uh, modes of the major scale. In fact, it is the brightest mode. Now, a similar idea is what we have used for the first arpeggio, the uh, major 6-9 arpeggio. Uh, we can apply to the added 9 arpeggio. This is major or minor triad with an addition of the 9th. And again, we start off by stacking two fifth intervals, the root C, the 5th G, and the 9th D. Now, after this, we play the major 3rd E and the 5th G on the 3rd string. Then we'll skip the 2nd string and move on to the ninth uh, D and the major third E on the first string. Now the result is a beautiful melodic open sound and I use a combination of alternate picking and economy picking, but feel free to try out other picking techniques that might work better for you. Now we can also superimpose, for instance, an E minor added 9 arpeggio consisting of the notes E, uh, G, B and F sharp over the C major 7 chord to create a C Lydian sound. Now the notes E, G and B are already part of the C major 7 chord, but the note F sharp is the Lydian augmented 4th degree in the C Lydian scale. Now in this example it resolves to an A minor 7 chord and in this respect the F sharp could also imply an A Dorian mode, which is an a minor scale with a major 6 degree F sharp. So, let's get modal, or let's get swifty. You gotta get swifty. Now the next wide interval arpeggio lick is one that Steve Vai plays in the solo of the song Die to Live on the Love Secrets album. A 
the lick starts off with a major shape on the first three strings and moves on in sixth intervals uh, that get wider to a ninth interval. And I have extended the lick with yet another wide interval, which is a, f uh, a fifth that spans over the octave. And the progression uh, which the arpeggio is played over changes from C to B flat major, which could point to B flat Lydian because of the two major triads on the first and second degree. Thinking from the perspective of a C major chord, the arpeggio starts on the root C and the 6th A and the 5th G that goes up a 6th to the note E. And then we use a slide on the 3rd string from F to E and a 6th interval from the root C on the 4th string to the note A on the 2nd string. Then the slide on the 4th string from the major 7th B to the major 6th A to be followed by the 4th F and a jump of a very wide 9th interval to the G on the 2nd string. And for the chord change uh, to B flat major, we make a slide to the note D followed by the B flat on the 6th string and the note F on the 2nd string. Now this is how it sounds. A little slower. Now I saw a great guitarist, Tony Campanovo, play this awesome lick. Do check out his channel for some interesting musical ideas. It's a major 7-6-9 arpeggio without the third, which makes the lick a bit ambiguous regarding to the quality of the chord. Now the lack of the third makes it neither major nor minor. Now, the arpeggio looks like this. Now if you play it over an E major chord, then we'll start off with the fifth B and the root E. Then to the ninth F sharp followed by the major 6th C sharp and the major 7th D sharp. Continuing on the 3rd string with the root E and then to the 5th B and the major 6th C sharp on the 2nd string. Ending on the 1st string with the 9th F sharp and the major 7th D sharp. Now as I said, because this arpeggio has no 3rd, it's major nor minor. And with the presence of the major 6th and major 7th, this lick could also result in a lovely melodic minor vibe. And the melodic minor scale is a minor scale with a major 6th and major 7th degree. Now in this way it sounds like this over a minor major 9 chord for instance. Now the next arpeggio has such a special sound and reminds me of the sound of a harp or even some music in games like the epic game Fable. I remember I used to spend hours and hours on that game some years ago. Well it can be a dreamy minor 11 sound or a harp like major 9 sound and uh, I want to give credit to Shane Barnes who has a lot of this classical sounding arpeggios uh, on his channel. So do check that out. The arpeggio is again based on stacking fifths. Uh, you've noticed by now that uh, stacking fifths is a very popular way to create wide interval licks and arpeggios. In this wide interval arpeggio, we'll play the root C and the fifth G and the ninth D. Only now the order is changed, so the intervals become very widespread, C, D and G. After this we play the minor 7 B flat on the 4th string and the 5th G on the 3rd string, creating a major 6th interval. This is followed by the root on the 4th string, creating a 5th interval. Then we play a minor 3rd E flat on the 3rd string. And the root C on the 2nd string, which forms again a major 6th interval. After this we stack fifths from the root C uh, on the 4th string to the 5th G on the 3rd string and to the 9th D on the 2nd string. And we'll do exactly the same starting with the 11th F on the 3rd string and stack fifths until you reach the 1st string. And then we'll end on the 9th D for a nice open ending. Now here's the arpeggio played slow.
And here's the arpeggio played a little faster. Now we can also make a major 9 version by using a major 3rd and change the 11th F to the 5th G, because the 11th is an avoid note in a major key. Here it's played slow. Well, here's the C minor 11 arpeggio followed by the chromatic submediant, the A flat major 9 arpeggio. And you learn about the chromatic submediants in the previous lesson. Maybe you remember. Maybe you have a good memory, but it's short. Now this very wide and open arpeggio ascends mostly in 6th intervals from the root E on the 6th string to the 9th F sharp on the 1st string. It's also possible to play the same lick descending. This example here is in the key of E minor, but it can also be played over the G or G major 7 chord to make it major, and over the C major 7 chord to make it Lydian, for instance. Now starting on the root E, we jump an octave to the next note E on the 4th string. Proceeding to the minor 3rd G on the 3rd on the string, and then jump a major 6 down to the B on the 5th string. Now we play a major 6th interval on string 4 and 2 with the notes D and B. This is followed by the 9th F sharp on uh, string 3, and the note D on the second string, creating a minor sixth interval. Now after this we play again a major sixth interval from the uh, G on the third string uh, to the E on the first string. And finally this is followed by a minor sixth B on the second string to the G on the first string. The lick ends on the ninth F sharp uh, for a beautiful open ending. Now here's the lick played slowly And here's it somewhat faster over the three chords I mentioned, the E minor 7 for a minor feel, the G major 7 for a major feel, and the C major 7 for a Lydian feel. Now this is the second Steve Vai signature lick already, and being aware of the fact that not everyone is equally charmed of his playing style, I know this is one too many. But this is such an awkward wide interval lick that consists only of double octaves that it should be mentioned here. Besides that, I think that Steve Vai is one of the ambassadors of the emotive wide interval and jumpy licks in rock music, together with guitarists like uh, Eddie Van Halen, for instance, and many more. Not Gary Moore, by the way. Steve Vai makes use of the outer strings, the strings 1 and 6, that are both tuned the same way as we all know. The 1st and 6th strings are both E strings. So playing these strings in the same position creates a double octave, which is an extreme wide interval. Yet, it's also a very empty interval, with no tension. So the tension comes from those extreme wide jumpy gaps. Now the lick itself uses only notes from the E minor pentatonic scale, which are the notes E, G, A, B and D. I adapted the lick a little bit for didactic reasons, so here's the lick in its full glory. And here's the lick played a little slower. Now I think you can agree that it's surprising to hear how the sound of an arpeggio can change by turning it into a wide interval shape. Now the result becomes much more modern, open and melodic with this wider interval approach. The melody, improvisation or even shred 
opens up and creates a modern and sophisticated vibe that triggers the emotions of your listeners and holds their attention to what you are offering them. The technical difficulty and the learning curve is maybe not one to take too lightly, but with the effort and dedication, it shouldn't be a problem to start integrating the licks and arpeggios into your playing. I think you really can benefit from this way of playing wide intervals. I know I did. Well, I hope these were crystal clear examples of wide intervals and you can use them soon to surprise whoever is listening to your wide interval extravaganza. So, greets from the Netherlands. Bye.